Good afternoon, I'm Ed Pozzuoli, President of Trip Scott, and we're here with another webcast. Today, we're honored to have the President and CEO of the Urban League of Broward County, Jermaine smith Bog. Welcome. Thank you, Ed. Big things are happening yeah. with the Urban League, and you're about to uh, bestow the honor of having the National Urban League Convention right here in Fort Lauderdale. Very much so. What's the date of that? So the conference will begin on Wednesday, July the 29th, and flow through Saturday, August the 1st. And uh, throughout that conference, we'll have plenary sessions, workshops, and many other activities for our local and regional individuals to attend. Now, I know there's, there's some big guests coming, potentially. Yeah. yeah. It's election season, after all. You're not going to test me, are you? I'm not going <laughs> to test you, and I'm not going to let, you know, you're not going to tell me anyway who's confirmed. I can't. What, when would we expect uh, potential presidential candidates to come and visit the conference? Friday, July the 31st will be the presidential plenary. So all the candidates uh, that have been invited and confirmed, and I can tell you that if you are interested in politics, you want to be there that morning. Right. So that should be from 7.30 a.m. to about 10 a.m. And the candidates will have the opportunity to present, and our local community will be invited. However, you have to be registered for the conference in order to attend the plenary. And as you can imagine, just out of security reasons, of course. Oh, yeah. But it's a big deal for Fort Lauderdale to have this uh, national convention come to town. It, it, a unique moment in time, given the cultural and diversity of our community. Yeah. It, it, tell, talk a little bit about that and what you hope to achieve. So I think, to your point, I, this is a really interesting time in our country. So right. if you can't host the year of the presidential election, the year before, I think, is just as grand. To put the state of Florida you know, in the national public as it relates to um, our political atmosphere, as well as our cultural uh, diversity and our cultural mix here, I think is really important. So to bring the conference in 2015 to Broward County gives us the opportunity to highlight the cultural diversity of our county, right. to highlight the thought leadership and the political diversity that we have within our county. And I think more importantly, that it gives us an opportunity to showcase what is so great about Florida and specifically so great about our region. Now, some of the people who will be coming are business and corporate leaders as yes. well. Yes. And they'll get an opportunity to be exposed to Fort Lauderdale and, and all the great things we, we take for granted here. So what I do hope, one of the, 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 the thoughts that I do hope that comes across here is that, that our local leadership and our regional leadership sees this as an opportunity to be able to demonstrate the ability for corporations and corporate leaders to see Fort Lauderdale as a place to bring their headquarters, that it is an opportunity for all of us to demonstrate not only from a tax base, clearly, but the talent that sits here in South Florida and Fort Lauderdale. So again, we want our corporate leaders, our local and regional corporate leaders to come out and be a part of the conference, be a part of those leadership discussions, mingle with the individual. Some of them they will know anyway to let them know, hey, if you're thinking about moving your headquarters anytime soon or anytime in the near future, think about doing it here in Fort Lauderdale. It's a pretty great place. That's, I think so. That's the message, right? Yeah, I think so. Talking about that, mm -hmm. this is an anniversary yes. coming up for the Urban League of yeah. Broward County. Yeah. What, 40? 40 years. We're crossing over, Ed. Wow. We're, we're going over to the other side. 40 years old. Wow. I mean, that's just an amazing, amazing, you know, amazing achievement. But the focus of the Urban League, I want to make sure our view is understand, yeah. uh, particularly that in Broward County. Mm -hmm. Describe for everybody what the main focus is in providing opportunity to our community. So when you think about your Urban League, and I say this all the time, that the Urban League of Broward County is strong because the community chooses the Urban League to be strong. And you do that because you understand, to your point, the mission of the Urban League, which is to give individuals opportunities, specifically in the areas of education, jobs, housing, and health. Because we believe once an individual has the opportunity to move forward economically and socially, they can make a difference not only for themselves, but for generations to come. We're not interested in handouts. I often say to people, if you're interested in a handout, you got to go two blocks down around the corner, but it's not going to be here at the Urban League. We take the best of what you bring to the table, and we give you the best that the Urban League brings to the table. And at the end of the day, we want you to move an economic and social agenda that helps you to move up the economic and social ladder. 
talk a little bit about the types of programs in some depth, because I don't know if too many people understand. So in terms of the programs that we have here at the Urban League, I'll share with you a signature program that we have called our Center for Working Families. And this really addresses the working poor in our community. We know that, and as a part of our 40th anniversary, we're really focused on breaking the cycle of poverty and highlighting the work that we're doing there. In our community, 47% of our residents live at or below poverty. That's an unacceptable percentage for us to talk about a community of haves and have nots. So in our Center for Working Families, we work with individuals, heads of households, who want to change that particular outcome financially for their families. So they come to the Urban League and we provide them everything from financial literacy and financial capability education. If they have a job or need a better job, we will work with them to help them build their skill sets. We develop plans with them. So very similar to those of us who have, have the opportunity to have coaches in our lives. We have financial coaches and professional coaches. We employ coaches at the Urban League to help these individuals and their families move to the next level. But the key is, is that they have to come in wanting to make that change for themselves and for their family. And how many people participate in the program? On an annual basis, over 300 individuals a year. Okay. So it's really a one-on-one -on -one session in yes. trying to move up the economic ladder. Right. And, and very honestly, Ed, uh, we start with an orientation. And in that orientation, uh, 15 to 20 percent of the individuals walk out the room because they're not willing to put in the work. But that's okay. We say to them, when you're ready to put in the work, we'll the Urban here. League is going to be here. Coming, going back to the convention, yeah. what impact, hopefully, will it have? Now, I'm not just talking economically, but as a, somebody who lives in Fort Lauderdale and works in Fort Lauderdale, what impact should I take away from having such a prestigious convention, national convention of the Urban League here in Fort Lauderdale? So I think a few things. My hope in vying for the conference at the time and bringing it to our city, clearly we wanted to give a gift to the city in our 40th year. So right. here's your gift. Anniver your anniversary <laughs> gift. Right. Here's your anniversary gift. But really practically speaking, the, the outcomes for me is to ask the question, what is left behind on August the 2nd? Right. So who are the individuals, the vendors that were able to get uh, subcontracts and contracts as a result of being a part of the national conference, whether they were local or regional? Who are the individuals that, as a result of the career networking fair, that's going to be a part of the conference where we have 40 to 50 national uh, corporations looking for employers as well as regional and local ones, how many people got jobs as a result of it locally and otherwise? When we take a look at the media impressions, what, what was left behind in the images of people around the United States about how we welcomed individuals into our city? And I think, fourth, that people will leave the conference, meaning from other areas, even maybe here locally, inspired to really do something different within their communities. The theme of this year's conference is Save Our Cities. And we know figuratively and literally our communities are on fire economically and socially. And we have an opportunity to demonstrate what makes our city so great and let people be inspired by the collaboration, the community leadership, the business leadership, the political thought leadership that we have here, and the way that we work together to craft a community that although we are not perfect, that we are looking for ways to work together so that our city can be a model city for the way that diversity really expands opportunities for everyone. You know, on that inspiring note, I'm going to say thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Ed. I really do appreciate it, and congratulations on your 40th year and bringing the National Convention here uh, to Broward County, and we look forward to it. So thank you, Jermaine. Thank you, Ed.